What if I told you that there are traders, American traders, that are actually going to compete for China in the Olympics? And you know how they're gonna do that? Renounce their US citizenship and become Chinese? But wait a second, I thought you couldn't become Chinese. China's not an immigrant country, it's not a melting pot, it doesn't just allow you to become Chinese. Well, that actually really depends on whether or not the Chinese government thinks it's convenient for you to be Chinese at the time to use you for propaganda. And this goes way deeper than that. Now, do I think any of these athletes are traitors for giving up their American nationality and deciding to play sports in the Olympics for China? No, I do not. I think that's a bit of a harsh word, but as an American who lived in China for 10 years, I would like to chime in about why I think this is a huge problem. And actually some of the language being thrown around on the internet calling these people traitors maybe is a bit harsh, but does warrant looking into the motivations and rewards and dangers of choosing to play for China. The Olympics is really turning into a massive disaster for Beijing and that's really Beijing's nightmare. You have a country that literally only wants to operate the Olympics out of their country because they want to use it as a platform for propaganda to make you believe that there are not in fact genocide camps in Western China. They literally even got a Uyghur minority to light the torch to slap you in the face to say, you know what, we may have genocide camps and we may be committing genocide in Western China, but we actually don't care. Anyway, let's talk about some of the athletes who went the extra mile. And we're not only cool with genocide sponsorships, but straight up decided to abandon their nation and compete for China. Jeremy Smith, Jake Chelios, Corey Kane, Brandon Yip, Ryan Sprout. Welcome, the Chinese hockey team. This group might not look out of place in a country that actually allows immigration or is an actual melting pot like Canada or the US or anywhere in Western Europe, but China is not one of these countries, and you'll find out why this makes no sense in a second. But first, we gotta talk about the most famous case, and that's Eileen Gu. Eileen Gu has been in the headlines because her dad is American, but her mom is a Chinese immigrant. So she's an American citizen who grew up in the US and has decided to ski for China, of all countries, in the Olympics. Whatever, right? It's her choice. Well, the thing is, she's actually being used for huge amounts of Chinese propaganda. The American girl who turned Chinese out of love for her mother country. Nobody can deny that I'm American. Nobody can deny that I'm Chinese. When I'm in the US, I'm American, but when I'm in China, I'm Chinese. That's fine. I have absolutely no issue with that. China doesn't recognize dual citizenship. After you turn 18, you are Chinese. Or you aren't. You don't get to have two or three or four. Without getting too in depth into the law, China simply doesn't allow you to be both. In fact, if you're caught in China with more than one nationality, you're in big trouble. That is, except when it serves the Chinese government. You see, government officials in the Communist Party of China, celebrities, athletes, it's a known corrupt secret that they have multiple nationalities. Look at Meng Wanzhou, the champion princess of China that was so wrongfully held in her mansion in Canada while China kidnapped two Canadian citizens in retaliation. She had multiple citizenships. She wasn't supposed to. Anyway, I should know that you can't become Chinese. I lived in China for 10 years and let me tell you, it's no open secret that you just can't do it. Are you fluent in Chinese? Yes. Are you married to a Chinese person? I am. Did you have half Chinese children? Yes. Could I become Chinese? No. China used Eileen to show all of the citizens of China that America is in decline, and even Americans who have Chinese ancestry would rather represent the beautiful homeland than the failed state of the USA. China is so advanced and so developed that Americans are fleeing to give their talents for the glory of the motherland. And the deals come into Bank of China, China Mobile, Mengnyo. Millions of RMB pour in just for switching sides. Chinese companies are tied to the state as well. 
this isn't like getting a sponsorship from Nike in the US. The Communist Party of China has a foothold in every major company in the whole country. So Eileen Gu's decision was met with elation in China, where she is now famous, celebrated in commercials, on bus stop advertisements, and across covers of Vogue and Elle and InStyle. She has deals with a list of firms. And it's a great marketing decision too. Being a top skier in the US is fantastic, but it'll get you nowhere near the level of fame as some other sports. And again, she's 18. I get it. I also want my children to be proud and celebrate their Chinese background. I speak Chinese to my children half the time. And we celebrate all of the holidays, and we study and learn about the stories and culture behind the country. The country of China that I love very much. China is a part of me, and it's a part of them. Being used by a government like the Chinese Communist Party is very different. Especially when that government is currently committing atrocities as we speak. The real problem comes in where Eileen, who openly supports human rights movements like Black Lives Matter and admirably speaks out against Asian hate in the USA, she cannot do the same in China. I, as an American, just like Eileen, value the fact that people can openly represent their beliefs and be a role model to people to spread those beliefs without being silenced, imprisoned, or disappeared. Because that's what happens in China. These athletes, these people who are used by China for propaganda and get monetary compensation in return, can't do the same in China at all. They're suspiciously silent when inconvenient questions come out because if they were to speak the truth or speak out against any of the human rights atrocities in China, not only would they be silenced, they would be dropped like a sack of garbage by China, the Chinese government, and because of brainwashing in media, by the Chinese people themselves. The people choosing to compete for China in the Olympics, as soon as they make a mistake, they come under attack. For example, US-born figure skater Zhu Yi was under attack after she fell on the Olympic debut for China. The hashtag Zhu Yi has fallen was the top trending topic on Weibo, gaining 200 million views in just a few hours, with some users really railing onto why she fell and why she's such a bad athlete. And that's the real shame for someone like Zhu Yi because she gave up her citizenship in 2018 from the US because she in fact was from California in order to go compete for China, which she did. However, after falling, she was met with vitriol and hatred amongst the Chinese netizens. She should just go back to her old home, said a Weiboy user. Please let her learn Chinese first before she talks about patriotism. This is a disgrace. Jui, how ridiculous your performance is. How dare you skate for China? You can't even hold a candle to an amateur. Jui did all the steps to try and fit in. She even changed her name to a Chinese one. But in fact, but alas, in the end, China chews you up and spits you out when they realize that you've either lost face for the entire country or you can't give them anything in the way of propaganda. This happens time and time again. People of other nations will defend China or the Chinese government, I should say, and their atrocious actions, thinking that that sucking up will get them some sort of special treatment in China. And for a while, it does work. But when your time is up and you're not useful to the state anymore, they will literally send you home, disavow you, or even demonize you. I'm not going to blame an 18 year old that's trying to expand her market, but I do have to point out the absolute hypocrisy of the deafening silence that comes from all people, not just Eileen, who choose to ignore or not speak out against the current genocide, religious persecution, sexual abuse, silencing of dissidents, and the absolute slew of other horrific human rights atrocities happening in China at this very moment. Like Eileen, I also openly supported the anti-Asian hate protests but I also support the same issue in China. You know what Asian lives also matter? The Uyghurs in Western China who are torn from their families, re-educated, sterilized, imprisoned, and stripped of everything, all because they're not the dominant race of Han Chinese. Those Asian lives matter too. 
You know what other public protests I went to? The Hong Kong democracy protests, because those Asian lives matter as well. The millions of people who took to the streets to stop and fight the persecution of the Chinese government. Meanwhile, they were imprisoned and their lives destroyed by the authoritarian dictatorship. Those Asian lives matter too. You know what other Asian lives matter? The mainland Chinese dissidents that stand up to fight for their rights, to stop pollution, to speak out for the downtrodden, or simply tell the truth and potentially save the world. Like Dr. Li Wenliang, who was silenced forever. Those lives matter to me too. You know what other Asian lives matter? The Taiwanese people who are constantly threatened to be destroyed and wiped from the face of the earth by the Chinese military and the Chinese government. This whole Olympics is mired in hypocrisy and evil. And it's up to us to stand up to the sponsors who are giving money to these genocide games. I hope you are not watching the Olympics. And I hope you are reaching out and calling and emailing NBC, Coca-Cola, General Electric, because these companies, these corporations are mute right now when it comes to the questions as to why they decided to support one of the most evil regimes in the entire world and to give a stage to a purely evil and disgusting government. It's up to you to call and waste their time because they're gonna have to explain to you why they made that choice. And that message will eventually get back to them. Do your part. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, both Winston and I working our asses off on these videos, and a lot of the times we get demonetized just because of the controversial nature of our content, so we appreciate the people that support us, especially the people over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash 86 Thanks for your support. I talk to you guys every single day on there, Monday through Friday. You send me messages, I answer. So I appreciate the support and keeping the channel going. Thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.